We're going to go through some examples of functions verifying continuity using this definition. There are three things that you need to satisfy for f of x to be continuous at a value a. First of all, this iff is if and only if. It's a double implication. It means that if it's continuous, I've got all three of those things for free. And if I've got all th three of those things verified, I know it's continuous. So first of all, f of a has to be defined. So we're good in all three of these, but that's where the infinite discontinuity fails, there is not a point at A for the blue graph. The second one, the limit needs to exist. Well, the limit existing means that it exists both from the left and from the right. So that limit needs to equal and from the right. Um, the jump discontinuity fails on this one because I'm approaching two different values there for a. And then finally, that function value, so the actual point, needs to line up with the limit. So that's number three, and that is where the removable discontinuity fails. Let's go ahead and look at an example. For this one, I've got a piecewise function, and I want to test to see if it's continuous at negative one. So let's go ahead and go through each of our three steps. So first of all, we want f of a, but a is negative one. So what is f of negative one? Well, when x is equal to negative 1, our function value is equal to 2. So is it defined there? Yes. So number 1 has been satisfied. Step number 2, I need to show that the limit exists. So we need to test that limit from the left and from the right. So the limit as I'm approaching my function from the left, so of f of x, as I'm approaching it from the left, that's going to be this first definition here where x is less than negative 1. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left of 2x plus 11. Now it's defined there, so I can go ahead and just plug in negative 1, and I get 2 times negative 1 plus 11, which is equal to 9, and I need to show the limit on the other side as well. I need those to be the same. So now as, a, as I'm approaching negative 1 from the right of my function, as I'm approaching negative 1 from the right, I need things that are slightly larger than negative 1, so that's going to be that second piece of the definition. So this is the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right of the square root of x plus 82. So I can plug that guy in and I end up with negative 1 plus 82. This is the square root of 81 which is equal to 9. So I do have that those two limits are the same and my limit exists. So I've got that second one done. So I can go ahead and say that the limit does exist. So the limit as x approaches negative 1 overall, they match. So it does exist. Okay, so number 2, check. Number 3, I've actually already analyzed that in a way. So I've got 9 for the limit value, but 2 for my function value. So I can say that those two are not equal, which means that this has failed. They are not continuous. f of negative 1 is not equal to the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x, which means that it is not continuous. So therefore, my function, I'm just going to abbreviate, is not continuous. Let's do an example of one that is continuous. For this next one, we've got another piecewise function. f of x is negative x plus 5 if I'm less than or equal to 3, negative 4x plus 8 if I'm greater than 3. And I'm going to test continuity at 3. So I'm going to go through my three steps here. So step number one is f of a defined. That would be f of 3. Well, f of 3 is going to be defined in the first part of my definition here because that's where it's less than or equal to 3. So f of 3 is going to be negative 3 squared plus plus 5. That negative is not in parentheses, so I'm going to do 3 squared with a negative on the end there. So that's negative 9 plus 5. Negative 9 plus 5 is negative 4. So is this defined? Yes. So I can put a check mark there. Okay, so step number 2. Step number 2 is to look at the limit to see if it exists. So I need the limit from both directions. So I'm going to do the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of my function. From the left of my function, I'm less than. So I'm again at this first definition of my function. So this is going to equal negative 3 squared 
plus five. We've already done that, right? So it's going to be negative nine plus five. Negative nine plus five is equal to negative four. Okay, so let's look at the limit on the other side. So x approaches three now from the right. Now I'm looking where it's greater than three. It's greater than three in my second part of the definition. So that's going to be at negative four x. So negative four times three plus Eight. This is negative 12 plus 8, which is equal to negative 4. So I've got the same value, negative 4 from the left, negative 4 from the right, and that limit does exist. So I can go ahead and put a check mark there. Finally, step number 3, I want to show that f of 3 is equal to, and I've actually already done that, f of 3 is equal to my limit. So f of 3 is equal to the limit. I'm just going to state that since I'm satisfying this. So x approaches is 3 of f of x, and those are both equal to negative 4. So we can go ahead and conclude. We can say, therefore, I'm going to use three little dots. f of x is continuous. I'm just going to abbreviate continuous at x equals 3. Let's do one more. For this one, we've got another piecewise function. Let's go ahead and run through each of our conditions. So first of all, I need to make sure that f of a, a is negative 2 this time, does exist. Well, that's going to be the second part of my definition there. f of negative 2 is defined to be 1. So this one is defined, and I can go ahead and put a check mark there for condition number 1. Let's do condition number 2 next. So condition number 2 is that the limit exists. So this is going to be x approaches negative 2. This is a rational function, so I don't need to analyze the limit from the left and from the right. Instead, I can go ahead and factor and use some algebra. It turns out to be um, a discontinuity, a removable discontinuity. Let's factor that numerator. x squared plus 5x plus 6 factors as x plus 2 x plus 3, and I've got that x plus 2 in the denominator, that's where negative 2 caused this to be undefined, but that gives me just x plus 3 now. So I can evaluate this. It's no longer discontinuous at negative 2. I can evaluate this with direct substitution. So let's do negative 2 for x plus 3, and that gives me a positive 1, so my limit does exist. And I can give number 2 a check mark. And then finally, step number 3, I've already done it, right? I've shown that the function value at negative 2 is the same as the limit at negative 2, but let's go ahead and formalize that with step number 3. We can say that f of negative 2 is equal to the limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of x, which is equal to 1, and we've got therefore it's continuous at, and I'm just abbreviating, at x is equal to negative 2. Take a look at this next video. You guys are doing great. Thanks so much for watching.